Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video where today we are going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently with that price action and what I think is likely to happen next. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe? If you do tap the bell and select all the notifications, you will not miss another video update. And as I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. It really does help the channel out massively, push the content to more like-minded individuals. And don't forget to let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments below as well. Let's jump right down into today's video. Okay, guys, here we are with the Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We're using the one hour Binance chart here. And as you can kind of see, we had this pull to the downside. Our expectations as of yesterday's video were to see 36,894 to 3794. We did come down lower. This actually does change our structure ever so slightly away from our three wave pattern and more into a five wave pattern. So from an Elliott wave theory point of view, what are we actually talking about here? Well, we're talking about this first initial move over this side here. Okay, this little area being our kind of first wave structure and then we bounced up just here and then we started to come down this has led us into this expected expected range of 36,896 to 37,095 approximately Okay, that's the yellow box area that you see there on the chart. However, we moved down deeper than the 1.382 FIB scale. This actually now converts our structure. Rather than just being a straight kind of three-wave pattern like this, we are now actually in a five-wave structure that is still corrective, and it looks like this, which means we still expect slightly further to the downside before we finally continue our move to the upside. This does change a little bit of the higher range structures on Elliott Wave, but we're going to just go through this, and then I'm going to go through some of the other structural points uh, that are re for, for reference that we need to know about right so if we bounced up here we got rejected here we are to basically come down in my opinion we've kind of hit the minimum expectation already you can see that we found some support there actually um, right here and we should come down you know anywhere really into this little range so let me go ahead and remove the fibs uh, basically we're talking 36,305 to 36,915 you can see that we've already met those minimum expectations we don't have to come down any deeper but I do suspect we probably will before we continue this move to the upside which I do think is something that is likely to occur okay so that's Elliott wave theory kind of giving us out this kind of targeted range I'm going to go ahead and remove that so we can kind of see that our targeted range is now down here. Okay, perfect. What about our EMAs and SMAs? Well, if I throw those on here, you can see that the white line is our, uh, is our 200 EMA. The yellow line is the 50 SMA and the red line is the 50 EMA. You can see that we're about to get some death crosses here on the one hour time frame. Essentially, short term price action, the yellow line, is about to cross down lower than the longer term price action, the white line. Um, and so that's going to basically spook the market a little bit. Now, on the one hour time frame, it's not overly that important, but it is an indication that we probably are going to be coming down a little bit deeper into our little yellow box area here uh, before we kind of see any kind of resurgence back to the upside. Now, you can see here that the 200 EMA was resistance. We came back, uh, we turned it into support, we lost it. Now it's back into resistance, okay? Um, so again, looking at our EMAs, everything here is still stacking up with the idea of moving down into our targeted range. That hasn't really changed. Now, if we go ahead and um, actually grab hold of a trend line, you can kind of see, and we kind of did this yesterday, that we're kind of trying to find support levels along here, and there just aren't any of substance, right? You can see maybe this one was, and it turned it into resistance and moved back down. Ultimately, uh, there isn't really a good trend to be seen here at the moment. Now, if we throw this the opposite way around, and we actually start to connect these moves to the downside, you can say, okay, well, there's your downward trend line. We are going to be looking for a breakout situation on there. As you can kind of see it's more parallel. So a trend line is probably not the best use for this one. I would probably come on over here and grab hold of a parallel channel, throw that in on here, and then we can start to see the parallel channel. Now, as always, when we see this time and time again, right over here on the left-hand side, higher highs, higher lows have a tendency to want to break on down. And lower highs and lower lows have a tendency to want to break on up. So we are looking for a breakout situation here, not a breakdown situation, in my opinion. 
we have our targeted range and then of course we are going to be looking for that move to the upside right so that's kind of where that one sits from your kind of emas and more traditional kind of ways of looking at the market the more easier ways to understand than elliott wave now if i go ahead and throw smart money concepts into the mix here we can also see a lot of different additional things coming onto the charts right we are in a bullish structure okay we can see that over here okay we kind of got this um, change of characterization uh, from our bearish state of play into a bullish state of play. Not much happened until we got to this point here. Uh, so this was uh, on the 24th. We got a break of structure to confirm that we are indeed in a bullish structure here for uh, for Bitcoin, right? So that's looking okay from a smart money concepts point of view. We've pulled back down a little bit here and we're into a fair value gap, but that fair value gap has not yet been filled. This fair value gap for reference, guys, comes in right here. It is this little one. It basically is 36,638 to 37,105. Essentially, if we do come down deeper as expected into our Z-wave structure here, we're more likely going to fill out that fair value gap before we continue this move to the upside. So everything on our one hour time frame is actually looking okay where it's not much of concern and everything is kind of moving along quite nicely let's turn take this out into the daily time frame now from a daily time frame our elliott wave theory structures are tracking for a fifth wave movement again we are still targeting out that high between thirty-eight thousand and forty thousand dollars that hasn't changed here we can see that our structures are ending diagonals and we can see one two three four and we're looking for that fifth okay so we cover these diagonals we have a five wave diagonal movement uh, that we're tracking on our hourly chart we also have a fifth wave movement of a diagonal which is an expanding diagonal on our daily time frame and that is all a part of a fifth wave movement in itself okay so everything is tracking out quite nicely here so far we're still targeting out those highs the only way that we're going to see essentially a, a breakdown of this is if we actually come down lower than our low which is right here at 34,120 that's going to be the low that's going to basically indicate a big breakdown structure because it is still technically possible for us to be in the way four without starting that wave five just yet okay so we're going to keep that an open mind on to that one now when we take a look at the emas on our daily time frame you can see that we have the 50 ema that's the red line that is actually you know quite well positioned right now just above that yellow line which is the 50 sma of which of course all are above the 200 ema that is the white line so everything's stacked up quite nicely in the correct order here for a bullish market we can also see that price action is above all three of those lines as well so we're not too concerned about that either so all of that is looking very very good from that kind of point of view we'll go ahead and throw the smart money concepts onto the mix here and you can still see that we're in a bullish structure so we've had a couple of break of structures after our change of characterization basically indicating that we are still in fact in a bullish structure to move for btc not much has changed from that kind of point of view uh, obviously we pull back down a little bit um here nothing unusual about that though we are in a pretty decent position on our stochastic rsi so you can see at the bottom down here okay so i'm just going to make that a little bit bigger as you can kind of see we're well positioned here with plenty of growth potential in the stochastic rsi we are overbought on the weekly and the monthly we'll talk more about that in a moment um, but on our daily time frame it's not terribly too much of a concern as we can take a look here we do have hidden bullish divergence okay this is a few days ago this flagged up on the 21st of november and i still think we are likely to see that resurgence to the upside i do think it is there uh, we are still targeting out 38 to forty thousand dollars. so with the hidden bullish divergence divergence we're in a pretty reasonable position this is happening because the rsi is diverted away or has divergence in comparison to that of the price action and um, so it is quite an interesting kind of point to kind of keep an eye on our volume profiles are really really low as you can kind of see we've been talking about this for a while as we've most recently started to see this pull to the downside though we can, can acknowledge that the price uh, action has been pulling back the volume's been pulling back that means that there isn't like a, a an urge to sell bitcoin at this point but we do know that you know pretty much as of march the volumes here have just absolutely dived right they're just completely non-existent and that is uh, pretty much the peak of the volume being the 14th of march 2023 and you know there's the occasional spike in here but for the most part the volumes are very very unimpressive we take a look at that and we can really kind of see and put that into perspective here with what drove the price up to that initial surge uh, towards thirty thousand dollars once we kind of hit that thirty thousand dollar range 
the volume was just non-existent, which makes you wonder what on earth was going on to kind of push price the way that it has gone. And, you know, is this actually sustainable on the volume profiles that we see? These are interesting things that we need to kind of take stock of, in my humble opinion. Um, so, yeah, really, really interesting kind of stuff there. Now, if we kind of take a look at the weekly time frame, here we can see that we're in the ascending wedge. Essentially, we have the overlapping structures. Now, it is an interesting pattern. There's a couple of different ways that I could look at this and think to myself that maybe we are, um, you know, still got a lot higher to go, but I don't think there's really that many. So, for example, we could argue that this is a big W wave. This here is uh, an X wave and we've still got this move for a Y wave coming up higher. And we'd take a look at that and we'd say, okay, well, it lo would look like we still have to kind of move up a little bit more, um, yeah, maybe make $43,000, $44,000, something to that effect to kind of complete out that structure. I'm not so convinced on it uh, because I do see this as an ending diagonal ending at that $40,000. And to me, that would then just be a uh, kind of way to kind of finish off our kind of patterns here overall, uh, because I do think that that basically would then put us into a really interesting spot. The only way that we could potentially do see a resurgence here is if we kind of consider uh, and I'm going to do some sense checks here just to make sure that I'm talking absolute sense and nothing else. Uh, this low on this particular candle was 24,920 and... Yeah, so that, that works. So the only way of looking at this other alternatively would be to kind of look at it as a bigger five wave structure like that. Um, and I think that would hit the 1.618 on our target ranges. Yeah, yeah, very easy to do that. So that's that as the option to kind of take you a little bit higher than the $40,000. Um, and again, you're still going to be falling within this kind of pattern nonetheless. But for the most part, all of it is corrective, even if we do have that final five wave structure at the end there. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I'm looking for breaks down. As you can kind of see, our RSI, our stochastic RSI that is, is overbought. Uh, as you can see up here, we had previous times when we were overbought. We, we are looking to come down to this oversold area um, and that is going to basically indicate a pivot in terms of the momentum last time that we were this overbought we did see a correction uh, from here to here which was a 20 percent move um, and obviously you know you can take a look at all of the historical movements and see that you know it doesn't the stochastic rsi being overbought doesn't necessarily mean you have to have 20 percent 40 percent 50 percent drops in the market it's just an idea that essentially momentum is running out it's all about volume profiles and the way that the volume has been kind of running out. If we take a look at the volume, you can kind of see here that, yeah, volumes are very, very low. This is also Bitstamp now, by the way, guys, not Binance. And so you can see volumes are very, very non-existent here in, in relation to where the bullish market volumes normally are. So all these moves to the upside don't really feel very natural. Um, so all in all, we can see that actually, yeah, I think Bitcoin's an interesting spot. We are looking for moves to the downside. Throw in our EMAs here on the weekly time frame. The, we are stacking up quite well. Uh, we are above all three of those, the red line being the 50 EMA, the yellow line being the 50 SMA, and the white line being the 200 EMA. Uh, you can see the price action is above them all, and it's all looking pretty good. Golden Cross happened a few weeks back in October, uh, so all of that is not too bad. Throw some smart money concepts on the mix here. You can see some fair value gaps, but we haven't really changed any characterizations from where we were in the previous bullish market, which means essentially we haven't even broken down enough to kind of signal a change of characterization from the previous bullish state of play to the to the bearish state of play that we found ourselves in in 2022. So smart money concepts on the weekly time frame probably isn't overly that useful. Uh, it's probably better on the daily or smaller time frames. But for now, as you can kind of see here, uh, there's a couple of fair value gaps on the chart. Uh, other than that, yeah, I think we do have the ability to kind of be thinking about equilibrium moving up towards it and then getting rejected. I am expecting a kind of uh, 40 to 50% reduction in Bitcoin's price over time. Uh, not something that happens instantaneously, but something that will happen, I believe, you know, over the next kind of several months or so, as we do expect nice, healthy corrections in the market. Um, but guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day.